Welcome to the UPCA podcast, a podcast where we will be speaking with national leaders within the United Pentecostal Church of Australia to gain insight about what God is doing across Australia and the world. Well, welcome to the podcast, Sister Downs. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you wouldn't mind, uh, just starting out this conversation, sharing a little bit uh, about yourself. Sure. Thank you, Brother Greg, for having me. Um, my name is Melanie Downs. Um, I am married to Jonathan, who is pastoring the church in Canberra. Um, I have three boys who are um, wonderful and keep me very busy. <laughs> yeah, you stir yourself short a little bit. You're also very involved in women's ministries. Uh, and then ov- obviously with the orphanage over in, in India, so you, you're a very busy lady and we're grateful for you your time here today to talk about this subject. Thank you. Now, you were supposed to share this at our most recent general conference, but unfortunately, uh, due to circumstances outside your control, uh, we were unable to do that. And so we thought that this would be a great platform for you to talk about this this uh, subject because we feel like it's very vital uh, to parents of all ages, but also to people without children to give them some sort of framework that they can look at when they do decide to have children. So if you wouldn't mind um, setting the platform for what we're going to be discussing here today. Sure. Thank you. Um, I was asked to speak about social media and the dangers of social media for um, family. You're right. It's a it's such an important topic to, to think about. And I do have to say that I am not an expert in this area at all, um, but I do have children. I'm very passionate about my family and um, doing everything I can to raise them according to God's word. Um, And I think this is a very timely topic for all of us, absolutely. And there's no doubt that, you know, we know social media, it affects all of us in our everyday life um, and definitely within our families. And we have to be so, so very careful There is a statistic, uh, um, a report was was released in February 22, and it said that by the end of 2021, 82.7% of Australia's population were active on social media. So that's just not they had social media. 82% were active on social media. And I think that's just a huge number and it just reminds us um, not that we need any reminder, but how how pervasive social media is within our lives. And as far as our family goes, we know that the family is a God-ordained God institute and he has mm-hmm. placed every one of us within families and he's given us as parents the responsibility to raise our children in that nurture and admonition of God. We know throughout the whole Old Testament, there's teaching about how the Israelites were to teach and raise their children. Um, We see how it had to be a part of their everyday life. It was intertwined into everything that they did. And I know we live in a very different world (laughs) to back in the Old (laughs) Testament, but there is no difference for us as parents. And maybe even more than ever before, we need to be Mm. careful. We need to be... um, deliberate about how we parent our children with love we have to be involved we need god's wisdom and we just we just cannot be complacent at all so i i'm grateful for the opportunity to speak on this subject um when i was preparing for this at the end of last year i did send out a survey to as many young people and parents as i could just to get a bit of a feel from within our church, within our mm-hmm. church, Australia-wide. Um, and I did get back about 70 surveys. So while I understand that's still a small number as far as a survey goes, it was really helpful. And I will um, mention some of the things that were brought up within that survey um, that were really interesting. But some of the things I just wanted to talk about, the, um, what our kids are using um, mm. From the survey, the the young people mentioned that they use uh, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube, Discord, Pinterest, Be Real, Kick, Reddit, and LinkedIn. And you know, brother Greg, there's two that I actually don't know of in that list. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I'm I am a bit of a 
a bit of a grandma when it comes to <laughs> what I use personally. But anyway, we'll, we'll go on. <laughs> well, I was impressed that you had Be Real and TikTok on this list because uh, people of, of my generation and older, we don't even talk about those ones anymore but those are the those are the two biggest ones for gen z right now for, yes for sure well i do know of those i don't use them mm. i don't know yeah. kick and i don't know twitch so they're the two i don't know but what i was surprised at that nearly all the young people use facebook and mm -hmm. we as older oh, myself as an older person than these young ones um you know get hassled about using facebook <laughs> like yeah. the younger ones but they're on it as well <laughs> but you know the opportunities that come from using social media are just incredible. And and I do thank you, Brother Greg. You're amazing in what you are able to do as far as social media and the reach that you have uh, within our organisation and out of that as well. So it's amazing what can be done uh, mm. with social media. And I do want to acknowledge that amazing work and all the opportunities that we have as Christians to reach others using social media. And some of those young people in the survey, they mentioned those things. They said um, some of the positive things about social media was spreading the word of God, gaining knowledge, sharing creative ideas, um, encouragement in my Christian walk, telling others about the goodness of God, communicating with friends. So, you know, we're aware of how wonderful social media is. And while all of this is so exciting and we really see endless possibilities of what we can do. Um, that's not why I'm talking today. My voice yeah. is more of a, a warning for parents mm. today and maybe a reminder of, of what really does need to be heard because we know, we know there's an enemy who wants nothing more than to weaken and destroy families and he wants mm. to get into our homes. And, you know, if we could take a moment just to imagine Imagine our homes and that, you know, there's a door that we have in our home that was open. And if we imagine that through that door, anyone could just walk in and start talking to our family and maybe not just walking in but and talking but staying there, staying around. Imagine if those people came in and they, they constantly swore and took the Lord's name in vain. Imagine if they, they told your family that what, they owned and what they wore was, wasn't good enough. Imagine if they came in that door and, you know, they weren't dressed appropriately. They were showing your sons or your husband things they shouldn't see. They were telling your daughters of beauty standards that were just unobtainable. These people coming into our homes, coming and going, whispering lies into our children's ears about who they were and what they should and shouldn't think or do. You know, if we had a door like that in our homes, if we really imagine that, and if we had a door like that in our homes, we would do everything we could to nail up that door and stop those people from coming into our home. And I know yeah. a, a few years ago, we actually, we had someone try and break into our home here in Canberra and we acted fast. You know, we called mm. the police, we had them come, we had... um different security measures put on, you know, our windows and doors. We changed things straight away because we wanted yeah. to protect our family. Yeah. And if we if we imagine a scenario like this, it's actually not too far from the truth, really, oh, because yeah. the, the majority of families in Australia, we have a door like this in our home. And if if it isn't monitored and watched, the enemy will come right on in and he will make himself very comfortable in our homes and we we do have an enemy like i said who wants to kill steal and destroy and if we're not careful we can have a doorway into our homes where everything on the outside will come into our home and then not only just into our home but into our hearts and into our family members hearts and this is a mm. serious thing that we just yeah. like i said we just can't be complacent about I I love that illustration because and 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 if you think about it in the context of this conversation where you were talking about how in Jewish culture back all the way in the Old Testament how involved parents were with with their children with their children's lives they would have never imagined that something like this was even possible no. you know they had a physical door that they had to protect whereas this is a a door as you said these things are real. We sometimes pretend that all oh, because it's online, that's not the real world. No, 
online is the real world. You're saying ninety percent of people, I think it was eighty three percent of Australians are active online. That's part of their life. That's the real world. Yeah. And so we can't pretend like what happens online is not real. It has effects on our families, on our lives. I, I, I love that illustration. Absolutely. I, if I could share a beautiful scripture, um, a real promise. It's in Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 4. It says, through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Such a beautiful verse. Through mm. wisdom, we build our homes. And I think this just fits right into what we're talking about because I want the, I know I need the wisdom. I need the understanding and knowledge to be able to build my home and take my family and guide them in a way that the rooms of my home are not filled with strangers and all sorts of worldly things, but they are filled with precious and pleasant riches. That's It's just beautiful. And, you know, the true riches of life, we know that is a good home. It's a great marriage. It's great mm. relationships with our family. That's That's the blessings of life. And we need to be careful of that open door because the enemy does not want to bring in precious and pleasant things. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm. But like you said, we can't we can't ignore that our world is mm -hmm. changing. You know, we said there's so many positives to social media, but we need the wisdom to how to navigate ourselves and our families um, through this world that we live in. We need that every step of the way. Mm. So as far as parenting in a social, in this age of social media, um, I know for myself, I have three boys. I mentioned my eldest just turned 16. Uh, my youngest is almost 13 and my, uh, my middle is almost 13 and my youngest is nine. Um, so I'm really, I'm really in the thick of this as mm. far as yep. technology and, and social media and, I guess for parents of teens, um, we did not grow up in a world where we had to had to have this at all. I think it wasn't until I was in university that I started even using the internet. You know, <laughs> <laughs> incredible. But our our kids from you know such a young age are just mm. so used to this this digital world. But it just goes to show that um, how important it is for me as a parent of a teen to keep informed, to educate yeah. myself. Um, another little bit of information I found was that research tells us that by the time the average Australian child reaches their eighth birthday, they've spent the equivalent to one full year of their life with digital technologies, which wow. is amazing. Yeah. So our kids are just in this digitally saturated world, everything, and we know with um, um, going through the last few years, our kids have had to do online learning. Um, there's no option, you know, for them. Mm. Sometimes it's just what they have to do. They have to experience. Right. Um, and as a parent, you know, we have no frame of reference for this. This is all new. How to parent kids in this age, in this time that we live in. As Christian parents, we need this conversation about how we do this. And we do have to take judgment away to be able to have mm. these conversations. We need to be honest with ourselves and, like I said, become more educated. Um, we are definitely going to make mistakes. I've made mistakes before, but we need to move beyond any guilt or shame and we need to work hard for our families. That's, that's the key. That's what we're doing it for. And Scripture tells us also that we know we become what we behold. And if we behold something for long enough, we will begin to absorb its value. What we behold, we become. Scripture tells us very plainly what it is we are to think about. In Philippians mm. 4 verse 8, whatsoever things are good and true and honest and of good report, think on these things. Our children will become what they behold. And what are we letting them watch and hear? Mm. We need to remember is that voice of god in their lives stronger and louder 
than the voice and opinions and lies of this world. We, Such a good we question. Live, you know, our society is just full of all sorts of things, sensual images, mm. morality, homosexuality is just another lifestyle, adultery, foul language, you know, we, we know what's out there. But what are we allowing into the hearts of our children and our teens? Yeah. Matthew Matthew six twenty two it says the eye is a light for the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. So what enters your eye is what you behold, what you see. And if your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. Second Corinthians three eighteen it says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the Lord. So as we behold God and we see him as perfect and wonderful and loving, that will have an effect on us. We know that as we behold all of that, we become transformed to be more like Jesus. And that is what I want for my family. It's what I want for my boys to be transformed into the likeness of God and not the likeness of the world. And I want to do everything I can to make sure that that happens. And we know, you know, with all the wonderful things that can be found on social media, it all has things that Christians should not behold as well. And this is where our responsibility as, as parents come in. We have to be strong and we have to be courageous and at times go against the flow of what is expected for parents to set that standard for our family. Yeah. The concept of beholding that you set out there is is so good because what you behold is what you become. Mm. And you juxtapose beholding God and, and having your focus and your attention on him to if you're allowing your children, if you're allowing your teenagers to constantly behold things that are not of God. And then we wonder why they're struggling in their relationship with God. It's because we're allowing them to focus their attention mm. on things that are not of God. Mm. And things that we've allowed into our homes, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I just want to talk a little bit about some more practical things now. Mm. Um, most of us probably will be familiar with the analogy of guardrails in our Christian life. And I, I love that the picture and the teaching that we have about placing guardrails in our life. We know when we go, you know, down mountains or on the highways we have guardrails on the side of the road and those those guardrails are not placed at the point of danger you know if I'm going down a mountain that guardrail is not at the edge of the cliff it's set Mm. back a little bit in in a safety area to stop me from going into that dangerous area and you know it's possible and it's necessary for us as parents to put up those guardrails in place to help our children, our preteens, our teens from wandering into those dangerous areas online. Um, Mm. So I'd like to go through just a few practical things that that might be common sense to people. Maybe they're just a reminder today. Um, But the first one is just having clear expectations about about screen time, you know, where, where the parents to help monitor our kids as to how much exposure they have Um, on screens, on social media, Um, is that time that they spend, is it spent well? You know, like I said, amazing things can happen online, on social media, creating, interacting with peers, problem solving, or are are our kids just sitting there passively consuming video after video as the time goes by? It's, you know, an important thing. Um, Some of these, you know, maybe just um, personal for me, I Mm-hmm. Families will set up their own own things that they have in place. But I think the important thing is that we we think about what we want for our family. Yeah, for sure. And we make we put those things in place. Mm. Um, for our family, we don't allow devices in bedrooms or um, at night time. Um, there's no devices kept in, in rooms overnight time. They're all charged outside of bedrooms. Um, if for some reason, um, say, one of my children are sick or something and they're in their rooms, maybe I'll let them have their device, but the doors aren't closed. You know, it's just little things like that. 
the majority of work is done out in the open where we all are. Um, there are a lot of um, monitoring apps that can be used. Uh, um, I've used a couple of different ones. One I have used in the past is called Alpact. Uh, these wow. apps are wonderful. They run, um, and again, I don't know what the, the technology behind it all, <laughs> <laughs> but um, they run behind the children's devices and they can um, you can have access to be able to monitor um, when the children can access different apps, what times of the mm -hmm. day the apps can be taken off. Um, yeah, it, it's it's very, very, very... Yeah, effective. that's very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very handy. Um, accountability. There's, I know, Accountable to You we use. Um, and, you know, for, for teens, uh, for adults, <laughs> this is a mm -hmm. wonderful thing to use. I know um, oh, yeah. if you've got, you know, teenage children... Maybe you want to ask your pastor to set up an account with accountable to you with your your teen yeah. or another trusted adult, um, and that just you know if anything um, has um, been searched or looked at at the phone, the person the partner that is set up with accountable to you will get a notification that something has been accessed. It's just setting up that accountability, which is yeah great. Yeah. I use it um, some guys that I mentor yeah. have it sent to me along with pastors. So yeah. yeah, for adults, it's great. For teenagers, it's even better. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's also, again, Brother Greg, you could probably tell more about this, but the use of a <laughs> modem and router. We have, mm -hmm. we have a newer modem, and through the modem, you can actually turn devices off so they have no access to Wi-Fi at a certain time. Um, mm -hmm. That's wonderful you know to be able to yep. do that if you just want to make sure at whatever time at night um, the wi-fi is turned off that's an easy way to be able to do that um, the other thing is and this is really important i think to set up early on with our children um, the idea that all devices are co-owned we all own these devices and right. you know so if i need to um you know, take my child's device. There's no argument because they have that expectation. They know that um, devices are co-owned. And this is an important idea to implement early, as early as possible. Even gifts that a kid are given to kids, yes, they're given to our children, but they're devices for us and the mm -hmm. children are, are allowed to use them at certain times. Um, for tweens, um, you know, we we let our kids know that technology is something we do together, not just alone. Um, and that's an important thing for all ages, children and adults, because, you know, the internet isn't always a great spot for people, no matter what age you are. So as far as, you know, not hiding anything, not being away alone, doing things by ourselves, we, we are there together. We shouldn't have to hide anything from people around us. Mm. Um, I guess the biggest thing is really go slow with introducing technology to our children. And again, this is for parents with younger children. Don't rush exposing your children to, to technology. Don't rush to give them a phone or devices or any kind of social media. Give them the right technology at the right time. And it's not about, you know, being anti-technology or anything like that, but it's it's just about delaying it. Go slow. You know, I've never, ever heard someone say, you know, I really regret giving my, that I didn't give my kids social media earlier. <laughs> no one's going to say that. And and really, I've, I've spoken to people and heard very, very sad cases where um, young people teens have been involved in things and I remember one mum saying to me it's so hard to close the gate once it's opened and yeah. that, that phrase really stuck with me and I thought you know we we need that reminder because we can we can feel pressured as parents you know if, oh, for sure. if other kids you know oh, mum he has a phone he has a phone well, you know can I get a phone it's that constant you yeah. know reminder <laughs> that all the children are doing something and our kids aren't but we have to be strong. There is no rush for our kids to have to have a phone. And as a family, set that in place. Set that age 
set that time and so their kids know and they can um they know when they'll be able to use whatever it is social media um do you have a do you have a guide like what, what is it for you guys yeah well we um I think Lachlan, because Lachlan's our eldest, he, our eldest mm. son, he, uh, he did have a phone when he started year seven um, mm. because he was the, the only one at the high school um, and it was, I think, one of us got a new phone so he got, you know, our, our he phone. He got the old one. <laughs> and he was able to do that. Um, but it, and it wasn't until year eight he got some um, social media um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so my other, my second son, he's he's at that age, so he's you know, <laughs> reminding yeah. us that it's nearly he's time. itching. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Him. No, I I like your point about go slow, because mm-hmm. um, I was just thinking back to when you mentioned earlier that uh, I think it was university when you started using the internet mm-hmm. more frequently. Well, for me, the the big change uh, when I was in high school was social media. Facebook came on the scene. I think I joined when I was a, a year eleven. Uh, when I joined, and my parents had no, you know, they had no clue about it. But back then, you couldn't really use your phone. It was still a desktop. You'd have to go on a computer. Um, but I think my first quote-unquote smartphone would have been when I got when I was 16 years old, and it was because I could pay for it. Uh, but I think the go slow idea is, is such a good idea because I was talking to someone about this. They were, they were saying that their children – were bullied at school and then they were bullied on social media and they, they hated social media. And, um, and I was thinking about when I was in high school, like when, when you were at school, you were at school. And then when you left school, that's it. Yeah. You were at home, you were at work or whatever, but it, there was a clear line between school and home. And now because of social media, the friends that you leave on the, on the, at the schoolyard, mm-hmm they're all online as well. So you, you're in constant communication with them and whether that's a, a positive you know, relationship or a negative relationship, it doesn't end. And so I think that's another thing to consider for parents when yeah. allowing their kids on social media that maybe it's, it's good to have different spheres of people's lives and not everything is blending together. Absolutely, yeah. You think, mm. and um, you know, our kids, like they're not at the same development level as an adult we know our teens you know their brains are still developing um and it's it's important to realize that they you know to distinguish that you know school and home and have a safe place where they can just you know shut themselves away if need be from Mm. negative experiences they have that opportunity um even just i think it was last week there was um a report coming from the US talking about social media media and youth mental health. And when I read this, I thought, yeah, sure, I, I know that. I could <laughs> I could have told you that without all the all the you know information. But there um the headline was kids who get smartphones earlier become adults with worse mental health. Mm. And you know we we can see that. We can see the effects I think um, amongst our mm. young people of social media. And, you know, that may be that developmentally they're getting too much, you know, too soon. Too soon. Mm. Yeah, I agree. So I, I read something just in the last couple of weeks um, so significant. It said, you can fence the pool, but you can't fence the ocean. And mm with all these guardrails that we can put in place, and I know I only just mentioned a few, I'm sure there's others that families um, do as well, but with all these guardrails, um, you know, their age and developmentally appropriate, but our kids aren't going to stay in our home forever. You know, they leave home, they go to friends' homes, they go to families' homes. What about when they're somewhere else and that fence has gone? You know, a pool fence will only protect your pool as soon as they go to someone else's pool or the river or the beach there's no fences and they can get into trouble so with all that that we can do with those guardrails we also have to teach our children to swim (laughs) we have to Mm. teach them we have to prepare them and educate them and really be deliberate about instilling godly principles into their lives otherwise 
you know, they're going to find themselves out there in that deep ocean and, and they won't have the skills to navigate where they are. Mm. And, you know, we're talking about parents, we're talking about families. They need to be the ones that step in and actively teach our children. We cannot leave it to schools. We can't leave it to our kids' peers. And we can't even leave it to our church or our Sunday school. You know, I, I love Sunday school. I teach Sunday school. I love church. You know, we can do everything we can at church and Sunday school. But that's, you know, one hour a week, two hours mm. a week. It has yeah. to be from our from the home. The parents need mm -hmm. to be educated. We need to educate ourselves so that we can teach our kids. So what do we teach them? <laughs> First up, and this is a tough one for us, Brother Greg, I think, <laughs> we have to model the use of appropriate technology and yeah. social media. <laughs> uh, we have to be the ones to give that example. And we've talked about it, too much time on technology, um, not enough focused attention with our kids, you know. And I don't, I really don't want to make people feel guilty because, you know, I understand there's work and there's time when we just need some time out and that's okay, that's okay. But we, like I said, we need to be honest with ourselves. Am I spending too much time on social media in front of my kids? What are my kids seeing? And, you know, there was... Um, one time in particular, a few years ago, I was taking one of my boys to um, a band audition. And I know my son, he was really nervous about it. He was auditioning for this band and it was with the school band. Um, and I went in and there were about six or seven other kids in this waiting room sitting with their parents waiting to go in. And I actually, locked, my son was next to me, you know, he was all nervous, had his instrument and his music. And I went to take my phone out and I looked around and every single parent was sitting there on their phone and then I saw all these little nervous children sitting beside mm. them and I thought, oh, you know what, My, these kids just need that reassurance right now. So, you know, it, it just spoke to me like sometimes yeah. there are times when we just need to be a little bit more aware of what's happening around us, what our kids might need at that very moment, um, you know, chat to them, make them feel less nervous about the situation, whatever it is. All right, I've said that. Oh, no, that's good. <laughs> I don't want to, yeah. you know, like I said, I don't want people to feel guilty because um, there's definitely, you know, times when we just need to do things and that's that's okay. Yeah. But we just need to have that reminder to sometimes put our phone down. Um, yeah. Well, especially if we're trying to model good behaviour. Mm -hmm. We're trying to teach them that don't let your world revolve around your iPad or your phone or your devices, but then our world revolves around our iPhone, our iPads, our devices. Absolutely. It, it's kind of hard to teach your kids to do something that you're not willing to do yourself, you know? Yeah, for sure. But the other thing, a little bit more positive, <laughs> is that we need to <laughs> teach and provide opportunities for our kids to use social media for good. They can mm. use it for outreach and ministry. Even just um, a couple of weeks ago, um, the, a brother at church who does our social media um, asked my middle son if he would, um, after Sunday morning service, make the little thumbnails for um, the YouTube videos for that day. Mm -hmm. So my son spent Sunday afternoon learning about Canva and learning about how to make um, thumbnails. And, yeah, so that was a wonderful opportunity That's for awesome. him. Um, he loved doing that and it was doing something really worthwhile and was going to mm. be used at church. So what a what a great opportunity that was for him. Mm. As far as um, teaching our children, this is a tricky one, but I have learnt more and more we need to talk about the tricky subjects with our kids. Um, there's mm. a lot of things that come up where even as a Christian parent we don't want we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to be able to we feel like we're um giving our kids, you know, too much too soon. But we need to talk about tricky things. One of those is pornography, talking about pornography to our children, obviously age appropriately. But sometimes we have to talk about these things before we actually want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about these things to my children, but I know I have to. I have to teach my kids what it is. I have to teach them how to identify it when they see it and what to do when they see it because 
I know that they will see things that it isn't good for them to see, um, even in the shopping centre, walking around, you know, with the advertisements and things like yep. that. But it's really important to um, to bring that out, that conversation out, so that our children feel comfortable to talk to us and know that they don't have to feel that shame that they can't speak to us. I think it's really important. Lots of different just basic um, biblical principles that we need our kids to know. Do unto others as they would have them do to you. That includes online in how you talk to people. You know, you, they might be on a game chatting to someone online. Talk to that person the way you want people to talk to you. Another one is just be good stewards of our time. Teach our kids, you know, there is time for, you know, fun and games. There's time for work, all of those things. Um Teach them that the online world is not always the whole story. You know, we get trapped in comparison, unrealistic expectations, envy, jealousy, low self-esteem. We can teach this to our children. Yeah, they, they hear it at youth, which is wonderful church, Sunday school, but we need to be that voice as well, talking to our kids. Um, teaching them about addiction. You know, we know as adults, every time we pick up our phone, the apps that we use are trying to get us to stay longer, engage longer, to use it more often. And, you know, talking about that, what that means, you know, examples of that um, with our kids is really important. Mm. Teaching our kids what to do when they see or hear something inappropriate. Like I mentioned before, um, we want our children to come to us to be able to talk to us when they see things. Um, and they might be at school, uh, they might have friends that have different digital rules at home, you know, and, and we had something recently where um, one of my son's friends came up and showed him something on their, their phone, just put it straight in his face. And he said it was a bit blurry, but he, he could see what it was and it was something that wasn't very nice at all. Um, but, and that happens, you know, and I'm I'm grateful that my kids can come and talk to me and let me know when that happens. Um, I'd much rather that than, um, you know, them feel like they can't um, yeah. talk about that or have to keep it a secret. Maybe one of the biggest things is that I want my children to know that they are loved no matter what. No matter what happens, they will have unconditional love in our home. They'll have that affection and I will praise them when they do something right. You know, when I ask them to put their device down, if they put it down straight away, I will praise them for that. That's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, you know, when, when things go wrong, I'm going to love them as well. When things don't go the way I planned for them to, I'm going to let them know that I, I love them unconditionally no matter what. And, you know, children, they want and they need and they expect parents to set clear limits. And this, this consistency that parents need to have, that is actually what builds trust in kids. And, you know, it can be hard. Consistency can be tough. We know it's important as parents, but it can be a really hard thing to do. But the double side to that is that when we are consistent, when we set our expectations, our children will trust us. We need to be a good listener. When things happen that we don't like, and I do say when, not if, <laughs> when those things happen, we need to allow time for our children to explain themselves, explain the whole story. Sometimes we, we jump in too quickly. Um, we have our own emotions and everything um, to, to go through. We need to stop. We need good communication with our, our kids, open and honest. Um, and I know one of my greatest desires is that my boys will feel comfortable enough to come to me when there is trouble and maybe even when they've made that trouble themselves. You know, if, if they have been inappropriate with, with their use, I'm still the parent that loves them and wants to help them through every situation. And this will only happen when, when they can trust us. Going back to the, the survey that I did at the end of last year, one of the questions was um, if you experience something negative 
on social media. Um, I think it was, do you, do you have an adult that you can speak to? Most of the young people that filled in the survey, they said they could speak to their parents if something happened to them online, which is wonderful. Um, but there was, there was a handful of kids that said they couldn't speak to their parents and there were even a few that said they had no one. And mm -hmm. even out of that group, you know, the anonymous group, um, even to have whatever it was, two or three that said they didn't have anybody, that's, that's a worry. That's a worry for us mm. that even if it was one uh, young person that thought that, we need to make sure that we have a home where there is open and honest conversation. And we need to be informed. Like I've said throughout, we need to stay up to date. And I constantly feel like I am trying to find out what the latest thing is, <laughs> learning more and more and more. Um, just it's not just you. I, I, I find myself behind nowadays as well. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's quick. Yeah, yeah even um, at the end of last year when I first prepared for this, um, you know, thinking about all of the guardrails we have in place, the, the age restrictions we have on phones, you know, setting up, you know, they can't access things for over, you know, 12-year-olds or whatever. Just as I was doing that, um, I read that YouTube had changed their recommendation for the use of the app from um, over 17, 17 plus. They had changed it, they'd low, lowered it to 12 plus. So without mm. knowing that, if you just have your parental settings on your child's device um, that you thought was limiting their access, because YouTube changed their age limit and it wasn't like a, you know a big announcement or anything, then the kids were still they were able to access that if that was that limit was on their phone. So changes happen all the time, and we just need to constantly um, be up to date. There, there is a wonderful um, uh, a group. They're called um, Protect Young Eyes. They're from the the US, and they are wonderful. They're on Instagram, Facebook, Protect Young Eyes. They are wonderful. He's uh, the man who leads that he's constantly updating things and giving out information so i recommend that's great look to that too so how do we teach our children you know what discernment and i i fully believe that god's spirit when we are praying god's spirit will give us discernment in our ch children's lives and i i know myself there's been times when you know, I, I might just pick up the phone, my kid's phone, and have a little look at it. I wouldn't normally look into, you know, whatever part of it, but then I, I find something, you know, that's a bit of a concern that I need to talk about. God's spirit will guide us as parents. You know, we need to have God's wisdom. We need to show grace. We need to be compassionate. But above all, we, we need to pray for our children like like never before, Brother Greg. I just feel really strongly that I, like we said, this world is completely different to what we grew up with. We need to cover our children with prayer every morning when they head out of our homes into mm. school. We need to just cover them in prayer and, and ask God to help us because I know on my own I cannot do this. I can't do it well enough, but I know with God, with God, he's able to step in and do what I can't do. And I'm so grateful that that we have God with us in, in this parenting journey. That's good. I am um, one last thing, if I could, Brother Greg, one last thing about that. I um we know the story about David and Goliath. Um we we hear it, you know, from Sunday school. <laughs> and I think about that story and you know, King Saul, the king, you know, the army, the older brothers, they were all petrified of Goliath. They couldn't step out of their tent <laughs> to go and fight. Yeah. And they just saw this giant and they were petrified. But it took a young boy to come and that young boy knew God was with him. And I look at that story and I think, you know, sometimes um, as a parent, as an older person, sometimes I feel like this giant 
is too big for me to fight. I, uh, to be honest with you, I feel, God, ha- this is so big. How can I protect my kids? How can I do this? But I, I think God showed me something that, you know, our kids who have grown up in this world, I don't think they have the same fear as us or the mm. same reluctance to step in and fight. And I pray that this generation, you know, that has grown up with social media, with technology, I think they have a different perspective than us. And I do pray that they're the ones that can stand up and this giant that maybe we are unsure about, they're the ones that will stand up and fight this giant. And I I look forward to seeing what our young people will do because I think there's great opportunity if they have their parents strong, guiding them every step of the way. Amen. Thank you, Brother Greg. Yeah, and just further to that illustration, and obviously illustrations break down the further mm-hmm. you go, but um, David, he had to have those times of development and he had to have those times of relationship with God and experiences before he was able to truly face the giant. And that goes back to the point that you made about, hey, go slow. You know, mm-hmm. our kids, uh, they're going to have, they're going to be different from the world. That's just reality. And there, there are going to things that there are going to be things that they want to do that maybe they're just not ready for. And so, taking that slow approach and and gradually allowing them to gain access to these sorts of things, I think, is the way to go. Um, this has been such a a great conversation. Thank you so much for your time today for sharing your wisdom with us. Um, was there anything that you wanted to leave us with as we finish up here today? I think that's fine, Brother Greg. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I think we all need to keep this conversation happening. As I said, I'm no expert. I'm a parent who's struggling as the next parent to do my best, and we Mm. need to be open and just be able to reach out to each other. I think we need each other as parents more than ever before to to do it together and to um, encourage one another. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the UPCA podcast. Make sure to follow the podcast wherever you listen to it so every episode appears in your podcast feed. You also might want to check out the UPCA YouTube channel where you are able to watch the conversation. God bless you as we reach Australia together.